I've been using Atom now since pretty much the day it came out, and one of its major strengths is the ability to extend its core functionality with packages. Like anything else, Atom and other code editors are a tool that should work for you and make you more productive. And the last six years or so, I've installed and uninstalled a lot of packages, but there's a bunch of them that have stuck around the whole time. I've chosen an assortment of eight Atom packages that I find very helpful, and in some cases I just simply can't live without. So let's get right into it. The first package is called Atom Beautify, and the core function of this package is to take any code and make it look better. Generally speaking, make it look better means indenting it properly, but depending on the type of file, it might do other things as well. So as an example, I have some really nasty JSON here. It's really bad indentation, things are not looking correct, there's a bunch of properties on the same line, and if I wanted to quickly make this all nice and pretty, all I gotta do is run Beautify, and then magically it's okay again. The area where this is extraordinarily useful is when I want to take minified JSON responses and just quickly expand them so I can see what's in them. But keep in mind, this will beautify a lot more than just JSON. This next package, which might actually be my favorite of all, is called Minimap. If you look on the right side of the screen, you can see this bar over here that has a really tiny representation of the code on the left-hand side. Being able to visually parse things fast is a big time saver. And for instance, here in the minimap, I can clearly see that there's six items in the main block of code. So if I wanted to jump to the fifth one, I know I can just jump there quick. If I want to jump back to the second one, I just bring it up to the second one. There is an additional mode for the minimap that I don't usually use, but you can click on Code Glance. And what Code Glance lets you do is you can mouse over the minimap and you can see a preview of that point in the file on the left hand side. And here again, this is all about visual parsing and being able to scan things fast. And as an extra added bonus feature, this does act as a giant scroll bar. I don't think I've ever even once in six years even used the small scroll bar on the right hand side. Well, I guess now I have. The next package is called File Icons. And this is more or less exactly what it sounds like. It is colored file icons in your tree view. And this is another package that helps with the visual parsing. It's really, really helpful to be able to quickly scan a directory tree to find different types of files without having to look at the extension. This helps me locate what I need really fast. And the list of file types that are supported with file icons is really comprehensive. As far as I can tell, it supports everything I've ever used. The next package is called Highlight Selected. What this package does is if you highlight a word, it will highlight all the other instances of that word in the file. So you can see when I highlighted name, it highlighted name everywhere else in this file. This may not seem like much at first, but there's two ways in which this is really powerful. The first is for variable tracking. Imagine you have a variable called records and you just wanted to see everywhere in your code where the word records is. So all you do is double click the variable name records and then you just browse your code and see everywhere it's highlighted. The second is its synergy with multi-select. So if I double click name, I can kind of get a preview on what's going to be multi-selected. So I see three things and now I can click control D twice and then I can edit these stuff all at the same time. Being able to have a preview on what it's going to select is really helpful. The next package is called pigments and this is going to let us see a preview of different colors in HTML, CSS and other files. And you're probably seeing a trend here, but this is another package that helps with visual parsing. So you can see with this CSS file, I can now see all the colors inline. So unless you're somebody that can look at something like BCF7DF and know it's a light green, then this will probably help you a great deal. You can easily just scroll through the file and you can see all the colors there in use really fast. And it's not just for CSS files, it's really anywhere. If I were to copy this hex code for this background and copy it into my JSON file, then you'll notice that the purple shows up here too. Next package is AutoClose HTML, and this probably should have been a core Atom package because it's a major quality of life improvement. And for anyone that works a lot with HTML, this is an essential package. And basically the way it works is, say you wanted to add a new element inside body called div. As soon as you close this, it's going to add the ending div tag automatically. Without this package, it just does nothing, and you'd have to actually close it yourself. And this really makes writing HTML a lot easier because you could just keep creating elements as fast as you can type. Next package is called tabs to spaces, which is pretty self-explanatory as to what that does. When you save your file, any leading tabs is converted to spaces, and the number of spaces is configurable. Now for any monster that might be watching this video, despite its name, it can also do spaces to tabs. But before you use the package for that, you gotta ask yourself, do you really want to live in a world where spaces are converted to tabs? I know I don't. Next package is called Zen Tabs, and this is actually a package I've only recently been using. The way Zen Tabs works is you set a maximum number of tabs you can have open at any given time. And when you hit that maximum amount, it will close the oldest tab that you opened. 
And it has some configuration to prevent tabs from actually closing that you do want open, such as you can pin tabs, and if you modify a tab, you can configure it to where it won't close that one. So for me, what this really ends up doing is it closes the tabs that I probably don't need anymore because they were tabs that I just opened just to quickly glance at it, and they're ones that I'm not actively working on. This has really helped reduce the clutter because my brain can't process 10 tabs at once anyways. And finally, as the extra added ninth bonus package, Atom Live Server. Atom Live Server basically sets up an on-demand HTTP server for HTML, CSS, JS, and other files. But it also has the added benefit of doing hot reloading, meaning when you save the file, it will update it immediately in the browser. So to get this going, I go to my HTML file, do Control shift p I type live, Atom Live Server start. I'll then make a little room here and then bring over the window that it made for me. And I can just add this file freely. So if I type hello world, as soon as I save it, it updates immediately in the browser. There's obviously tons of ways of making a live server like this, but this one's built right into Atom and has hot reloading built in that's connected to Atom. And just one quick note before we finish up, even if you are not using Atom Editor, there are definitely VS Code or JetBrains equivalents for all of these packages. So if there's one or more of these packages that you've never checked out, definitely check them out and see if they can do work for you. Also, is there any Atom package that you use all the time that I did not list here? Definitely let me know what package that is below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.